Hi folks! Welcome to the new series, Star Citizen Cadet Academy. In this series, we'll be exploring the game Star Citizen. So I heard of this controversial game that has amassed a ton of crowdfunding for the past 10 years and thought I might give it a try and relay the experience. Bear in mind, the game is still in alpha stage and it might not be performing flawlessly on a consistent basis. In today's episode, I'll be covering my first few days of playing the game along with some of the best starter choices. This video will be split into 5 sections. First glance, the universe, gameplay, starter ships, and finally, a summary. Let's get started! I was blown away watching how detailed the game is even at its current stage. Some people even went all the way calling it a space simulator. I'm not gonna lie, this game really blurs the lines between a game and a sim. We start off in the character creation section which is for some gamers a couple of hours of gameplay content. Afterwards, you enter a beautifully detailed universe that I found myself exploring for a few hours without jumping into any of the gameplay options this game has to offer. It was truly an entertaining experience. The game currently consists of one solar system that consists of a star and four planets that you can choose from as your starting point. Don't let that fool you though. Even though it sounds small compared to other games, each planet has multiple moons, space stations and mining asteroids that you can fully explore. Not to mention the planets themselves. If you're into exploration, you have a lot of content waiting for you. The game has more than a few gameplay options to choose from, ranging from simple delivery missions, search and investigate, ship combat, or FPS missions. Both PvE and PvP are available should you prefer to go for a more exciting gameplay alternative. There are also some other gameplay options you can pursue like medical, cargo hauling, mining, and exploration. Gameplay is where most of the alpha related bugs occur so I would recommend getting mentally prepared to lose some stuff to a bug every now and then. When you die in game, you lose everything on you, respawn back at the station or city you set your revive point at and your corpse gets left behind where you died. Anything safely stored in a station will not be lost. You can always go back and loot your corpse to recover your belongings, but I've come across it sometimes that your corpse despawns. Also, as long as you are in the same game session, your ship does not despawn. So if you had some stuff stored in your ship, you can always go back and collect it. It's also worth mentioning that with the new 3.18 update that is just around the corner, the game will have a few more gameplay options to choose from like salvaging, racing and a much more refined form of piracy. To be able to play this game, you have to buy one of the pledge packages listed on the RSI website that comes along with one of the starter ships. Afterwards, you can either upgrade your package for a better ship or simply buy it with in-game currency. I've taken the liberty of trying most of the starter ships and I can safely say you have got some interesting choices based on what you have in mind. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that my review for starter ships will not get into much details. Just a total feel of how ships perform and cater to your needs. If you're interested in a particular ship, let me know in comments section and I'll dedicate a separate in-depth review for it. 
Let's start with the Aurora since it's the cheapest pledge package. The Aurora is quite convenient for those who are looking to have an all-rounder with a little bit of everything. It has little storage room, an interior, and a bed to log out in. Its weapons are not the best compared to other starters, but it's fast enough to get you from point A to B in a timely manner. The package currently stands at $45, including both the ship and the game digital download license. The Mustang Alpha is designed for those who are more into ship combat. It has superior firepower and mobility, but in exchange it has no interior space and very little storage space. Like the Aurora, the Mustang is sold for $45 including the ship and license. Next, we've got the 100i. The 100i is the more luxurious alternative to the Aurora with pretty much the same amount of benefits. A more spacious interior on a slightly faster ship sounds like a good plan if you're looking to spend some extra bucks. The 100i is currently priced at $65. Quite the good bargain when you factor in how comfortable its interior is compared to the Aurora. Not to mention the extra cargo space. As they say, luxury comes at a price. Better in my opinion is the best starter ship in terms of cost versus value. It has ample cargo and interior space, good armor, and a huge fuel tank to fuel your adventures without the need to go back and refuel as often. It also has most of the internal commodities like a bathroom, a bed to log out in, a storage locker, and a weapons rack. It can also fit a small ground vehicle in its cargo compartment. Currently, the Cutter Starter Pack is no longer available in store for some reason. But if you want to start your journey in a Cutter, it is valued at $60. You can buy any $60 package and swap the ship you get for a Cutter, or you can buy one of the cheaper packages and upgrade the ship afterwards. The C8X Pisces is one of the starter ships I personally felt comfortable flying. Even though it has no bed to log out in, the ship handles very well and can get in and out of tiny spaces giving you more exploration options. Its weapons are similar to other starters we've just covered, so I wouldn't either put it above or below others when it comes to firepower.
Like the cutter, the C8X Pisces is currently sold at $60. Quite the good bargain for what the ship has to offer. The Avenger Titan has been sitting on the throne of starter ships for so long. Between its large cargo space, a log out bed and its weaponry, the Avenger Titan can take it to places other starter ships would struggle to survive in. Avenger Titan currently sells at $70. You might think it's a bit expensive, but this ship is truly a jack of all trades. It has good speed and maneuverability, formidable firepower, and much room for storage which makes it worth its price. The only comment I may have on the Avenger is how tight its living quarters is. Other than that, it gets a perfect score for a ship of its size. The Anvil Arrow is arguably the best combat oriented ship you can get under $100. It's extremely fast and responsive and very hard to shoot at, not to mention its firepower is decent enough to take care of pretty much anything you might run into as a beginner. But like the Mustang Alpha, the Arrow has no interior space or storage, restricting you to only one gameplay option. The Arrow currently sells for $90. Expensive? Yes it is. But it's a dedicated fighter that serves its role very well. The Nomad is, to put it simply, Star Citizen's pickup truck. You might not like the way it looks at the beginning and trust me you're not alone. But after a while? It sort of grows on you. It has everything an all-rounder would hope for, including interior space, a log out bed, a kitchen, and a more than decent cargo compartment. Its firepower is also decent enough to get you in and out of trouble. The only thing I don't like about that ship is that its cargo space is not within its interior, hence the pickup truck reference. Nomad currently sells for $95. I'm not gonna lie, it's quite overpriced compared to all other starter ships we covered so far. Its main selling point though is that it's the only starter ship that can comfortably fit a rogue mining ground vehicle in its cargo compartment. Its wide detached cargo space allows the rogue miner to sit comfortably for transport. For some, this is quite the asset, maybe even enough to justify its price. There are a few packs priced above $100 if you're feeling fancy. Bear in mind though, these ships are mostly bigger than other ships reviewed today and might not be beginner friendly to fly, especially cause most of them would be more effective with more people manning them.
all in all, Star Citizen is a decent package of fun. If you're into space games and don't mind running into a few bugs every now and then, you will enjoy your journey. It has come a long way and is much more playable now. Not to mention it's in active development so you will see constant improvements as time flows. I have personally bought the Cutter Starter Pack and can safely say all things considered, I'm quite happy with the value I'm getting out of what I spent. If you want to join me in the verse, feel free to use this referral code to receive some extra starting funds. That's it for today's episode. If you have a question, post it in the comments section down below and I'll be happy to answer. In the next episode, we will talk about the best ways to make money starting out in Star Citizen. Stay tuned! Please feel free to like and share the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to help me keep more videos coming. Thank you for watching, till the next time.